I was the first black person to set up a, a station owned by a, a black person in Europe as far as I know and the year was 1980 it was in the, the, the winter of 1980 it was the first broadcast from BBC by the studio in my in my front room all this you can imagine all this crazy equipment so I'd have my bottle of beer there, I'd have my spliff there my echo machine there, my noise effects there, the turntables there, mic, headphones, etc. And I'd, I'd start doing my show, mostly onto cassette, but sometimes onto a reel-to-reel. -reel. used to have a reel-to-reel -reel as a Revox thing. Uh, and at the same time, I had to chase the other DJs to, to, to get their shows done. Later on, when other DJs got involved, everybody had a studio in their house. So Dr. Watt had his studio, Miss P had her studio, uh, Nick Coleman and then uh, Martin and Smiley had their own studio and you have to coordinate everybody's tape to make sure you get your tape in on time and the DJ had to make sure you had to give props to the next DJ coming so it was all tricky and Nenny had her own studio as well, Nenny Cherry and uh, Sis C, we had another DJ playing so called Sis C as, as Camilla so it was a call every week to, to get these people to get their, t their shows in on time and get the tapes together. So fr Friday we go and broadcast these tapes on top of the tower block. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> crazy. We spoke to Mike, Mike Williams and, and uh, Dr. Watts and to Papa C because we used to climb up the tower block. I'd be 22 stories up. And we'd have to uh, winter rain or shine. We'd have to climb out could go up in the lift, climb out the outside of the building and climb over into the into the uh, lift where they keep the lift machinery and then onto the roof to put up the aerial every Friday and rig up this cassette deck and all that and then to t of course to take it down at the end. L a labour of love it was man but once, it's, once the signal went out and, and you just knew people were listening, great feeling you know. Yeah. Well, the first time I went live, it felt like, how can you f explain it? It felt like, I know I'm doing something that's needed. And to hear, to hear, to hear yourself on, on coming out on the radio is like a powerful feeling. And then you, when, you, when you learn that your friends are listening and the community is listening, it's a strange feeling. You f first you have to get used to hearing your, your voice coming back at you f f from, the, um, from the radio. So that was kind of strange. But after a while, it, 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 the feeling of, of uh, knowing that you're doing something good became more stronger as, as the, the, the weeks and months went by. And, and the greatest feeling was, was going down the local high street, say, and hearing people talking about this new station. <laughs> Amazing feeling that is. And kind of knowing that, you know, they don't know who you are and I'm listening, you know, it's nice. I, I, I tried to keep a low profile at the time and not revealing who I was. A few people knew, um, sh sh a few uh, record shop owners, etc. But then word gradually got out, you know. and. The, the, the community kind of look, looked up to you, looked up to, to myself. Um, and a lot of people started to write to the station for to, to advertise certain local community things, which was great. Uh, local community events. I remember there, there was a, there was a, 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 a doing, uh, I think it was, Brent Park, like a park in Brent. It used to be like a sound system uh, event every year. They used to get maybe two, three, four sounds to come and play in this park. And normally it would attract maybe a few hundred people. But we advertised it one year and I think it was like 5,000 people come to the park from as far away as Luton and the Slough surrounding county. Yeah, it was very powerful knowing that you had the effect on, on people now. DBC was 
needed at the time. It came at the right time, it, it seems. Um, to the, to the black youth and, and also the white generation, i.e. Uh, certain white youth really uh, clutched onto what DBC was, was about. I was also linked up to In The Punk Days. I used to be in like a punk band as, a, as their engineer, uh, mixing them on stage and stuff like that, and made friends with, with, with a lot of the early punk guys. Uh, yeah, a good friend of mine was Joe Strummer. Um, and behind the scenes, uh, him and a couple of other other bands used to support us financially as well still, you know. Jo Joe Strummer didn't actually do a set on DBC, but he, he shared a transmitter uh, with us. We used to share with a group called Our Radio, who used to, 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 to loan the, the transmitter to anybody who wanted to, to broadcast. And Joe being one of the people, um, Keith Allen being another, groups like that used to broadcast. So people get the idea that jo Joe was actually broadcasting on DBC. And uh, the, the original medium wave shows that were on, on, on Sunday afternoon. It's three, three till, sorry, 1.30 till 3.30 on a Sunday afternoon. And then later we extended that to 1.30 till 6, 7 o'clock, depending on how, how I felt. But we went on to FM. And it changed to Friday nights. Uh, Friday nights from six o'clock till twelve midnight, or two to one, two, three o'clock. Normally, when we'd put on like a, a sound system tape or a live a reggae artist live session, medium wave transmissions. Uh, Neesden, I could get from Neesden to. It depends which direction. So Neesden to just about Labrook Grove, right. in one direction. Needs them to, to Watford in another. Uh, the shape of the, the, the country of the hills, etc. On the other occasion, the, the people tell me that if the cloud cover is right, the signal can bounce as far as uh, France. Uh, on medium wave, that happens sometimes. You can hear foreign stations coming in. So, the same way DBC, sometimes it could be heard in parts of France. I've been told over the years. On, on FM, on FM, DBC used to go out maybe, the, the, the broadcasting uh, spot was in uh, the roundabout, in, in Shepherd's Bush, the Shepherd's Bush roundabout. So from there, people used to bring in from Surrey, places like Surrey and bits of Kent, East London, li literally a good coverage from there. It depends again, if, it depends where you are, if you're on a hill, in, in Surrey, you pick up DBC. Yeah. But, the, but, but also the great thing was that, that people used to make tapes, and we used to sell tapes, and the tapes used to travel w far and wide, worldwide. Uh, Japan, America, and Australia, and all those places. Yeah, people still out there. Sometimes on uh, Facebook, people contact me and say, oh yeah, I've still got my tape or my T-shirt and stuff, and they're in middle America somewhere, you know. It inspired a lot of people. I, I think uh, I remember a, uh, a film crew came from uh, Japan and and one from Australia for their TV, and and that, that kind of helped spread the word. So it was on Japanese TV, Australian TV, and uh, magazines in Holland and France, etc. So so the word spread. Uh, we got raided um, once, in, in reality once, uh, so, uh, taken to court, we got taken to court once only, but we got raided, in, in total I think we got raided t two, two times, that's all, but people think it's more, but it's actually two times, so one on medium wave and one on FM, the, the, the medium wave one was very funny, I must tell you. So, so I was there in, in, in my front room eating my Sunday dinner now. So I had a knock on the door and answered the door and two DTI, my missus answered the door and, and DTI man, two DTI men, <laughs> Mr. Eric Gotts, very famous DTI man, came in and came up the stairs and I was eating my dinner so I said, oh, can you hang on while I finish my dinner? He said, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> but I'm thinking. I said, you want a cup of tea? <laughs> a cup of tea. 
So then afterwards he said, um, is, this your tra- is that your transmitter in the backyard? I said, yeah. He said, did you switch it on? I said, yes. Did you make the programs? Yes. And then I said, well, uh, he said, well, why? I said, I'm doing it for my community. The black, we need a black radio station, which he really respected. But he said, well, sorry, I'm going to have to <laughs> lick you and take you to court. I said, fine. Um, and then he took the stuff away, but, but I didn't realise at the time, if I had said no to all the questions, he couldn't have nicked me. I didn't know that. He incriminated myself. He got something like £150 fine or something, but we had pe- we put out appeal and some people came to the court and protested Black Station, blah, blah. The judge was very sympathetic, but, or the magistrate was sympathetic, but yeah, he fined us. So that's the only time we ever went, went to court, and that was me and Dr. Watts. Went to court at that time. On FM, they, they raided the uh, car in 84. But the transmitter was on top of a, a lady called uh, Car- Caroline Younger, who, who, who was the cousin of George Younger, who was in Margaret Thatcher's government. So for a while, the police didn't know what to do because this, this was coming from like a one of the establishment, as it were on top of her roof and stuff, you know. But then, so the story goes, Mike, Mike the bike room is better than me, he said we put our broadcast when B- Bota was coming to pay a visit to, to the UK. And we put out a broadcast to say, oppose the march against Bota. And as soon as that went out, they came and raided the station. Yeah. So that's the only, only other time. One truck I remember that, that used to go down was a soldier takeover. Uh, there, there's just so many early yellow man stuff. Um, Bloodfire Posse, a rubber dub soldier, that's a big, big truck on DBC. Again, I, I could go back to Ijerman. Ijerman Levi was an artist too. At the time, wasn't getting much attention, but the, we, we kind of helped, helped him with that. I know Miss P later on, she helped musical youth to, to break through and Bitty McLean to an extent to, to break through. Um, Aswad, of course, I mean, because we're, we're from Grove and Aswad, we, we've, we've known Aswad from way back from the 70s, early 70s. They were our friends and we used to always push their, their stuff, you know. Um, a, a lady called Judy B- Boucher, I think she got to number one with, with her tune. She came through, um, uh, oh, fuck I forget his name now, Orbiton, Sonny, Sonny of Orbiton Records. Orbiton was one of the first uh, uh, people to start advertising with DBC regularly. And we used to, he used to have an Orbiton uh, section, 15 minutes, Orbiton Records, we used to always push his company's records. And I think we helped him to, to break Judy Boucher as well. 2004, we done done a compilation for Trojan Records, mm. uh, in, interspersed with j- uh, our early jingles, some of the jingles, uh, which is double CD, and it, I think it done very well. Mm. I would love to put another one out as well. Mm. You mentioned is like the, the other DJs in the station and the types of music that was very important. Because Soka, Soka at the time wasn't really getting uh, uh, played that, that much. I think Alex Pasco used to have a, a show on Radio London and used to play a little bit of Soka. So when DBC came and started to play Soka regular, it went down well with the, with the, um, with the other communities not from Jamaica, the other, from the other islands went down really well. Then we started to play African music. Oh, that was a great, great boon to the African community, you know. Hip hop, early hip hop, of course. And then a cherry used to do a, a hip hop thing, and that was a great boon. And jazz, through my, again, through my connections with Donis John's records, a few of the DJs, notably Nick Coleman, came in and started to play a, a jazz show, and it went down really well. Now, Jazz FM, <laughs> where did they come from, right? Um, and rhythm, early rhythm and blues. Now, m- most black people, they they dismiss 
early real, not R&B, but real rhythm and blues. They dismissed the sound, but it was such a great music. So we had uh, we had two great DJs playing that music and trying to bring back and show people where the where the history has come from. You know, that that, that I like. That, that I like. If if nothing else, I kind of I like the fact that we opened up the the ears of people to to other musics other than, other than the reggae. The youngest DJ in DBC at the time, a DJ called Mecca. We call him Mecca Rankin. And I, th I think he started when he was. I was the first black person to set up a, a station owned by a, a black person in Europe as far as I know and the year was 1980 it was in the, the, the winter of 1980 was the first broadcast from DBC he actually, he actually gave me a tape of him uh, playing the guitar and rehearsing and some songs never got released but it was like versions of I don't want to wait in vain and Exodus acoustic version